after nine lectures in CVS discussing hypertension and diuretics. It's time to discuss a new topic, and it will be heart failure. Today we'll discuss heart failure pathophysiology. The lecture's PDF will be down in the description. The first question we should ask is, what is heart failure? Heart failure is a condition in which the heart fails to pump adequate amounts of blood into the systemic circulation, to meet the metabolic demands of the tissues. Depending upon the cause, heart failure may be classified to, low output failure or high output failure. Low output failure, is a reduced pumping efficiency of the heart, that is caused by factors that impair cardiac function such as myocardial ischemia, myocardial infarction or cardiomyopathy. But in high output failure, the cardiac output is normal or elevated, but still cannot meet the metabolic and oxygen need of the tissues. And that may be caused by hyperthyroidism, that causes hypermetabolism, or anemia that causes reduced oxygen carrying capacity. Heart failure is also classified to left heart failure and right heart failure. Let's discuss their causes and manifestations. As we know from the CVS introduction lecture, the left side of the heart is responsible for pumping oxygenated blood from the lungs, to the peripheral tissues of the body. The most common causes of left heart failure include, myocardial infarction, cardiomyopathy and chronic hypertension. Step by step let's see what happens in this condition. First, left side pump failure occurs that leads to a decreased stroke volume, which is the volume of blood pumped by one ventricle during one contraction. So increase the amount of blood, that fills the left ventricle during relaxation, which is called left ventricular and diastolic volume. And that means increased preload. Then, blood pools in the ventricle and atrium, and eventually backs up into the pulmonary veins and capillaries. Leading to congestion of blood in the pulmonary circulation and that causes pulmonary pressure and pulmonary edema. That's why left heart failure is also referred to as congestive heart failure, due to the pulmonary congestion of blood that accompanies the condition. And that results in, dyspnea, cough, frothy sputum, rails or crackling sounds, that may be heard through a stethoscope, as a result of fluid accumulation in the lungs. Difficulty breathing when lying down or known as orthopnea. The accumulation of fluids and dyspnea, that are often worse at night, or when the patient lies in the supine position, because blood and fluids from the lower limbs may redistribute into the pulmonary circulation. Poor perfusion of systemic circulation that may lead to cyanosis. Generalized fatigue and muscle weakness. Right heart failure often arises as a consequence of left heart failure. As a result of the increased pulmonary pressure that accompanies left heart failure, the resistance to blood flow from the right ventricle to the lungs is significantly increased. Over time, the increased workload on the right ventricle leads to dilation, and eventual failure of the right heart. Right heart failure may also result from chronic obstructive pulmonary disease and cystic fibrosis. Increased right ventricular workload causes venous congestion and distension. Backed up blood distends the visceral veins, especially the hepatic vein. As the liver and spleen become engorged, their function is impaired. Rising capillary pressure, forces excess fluid from the capillaries into the interstitial space, causing edema, weight gain, and nocturia. So how the body responds to all of that? When heart fails, cardiac output decreases, leading to a decrease in blood pressure, and that decreases renal perfusion, leading to, activation of sympathetic nervous system, and renin release by juxtaglomerular cells and renal afferent arterioles, due to both the decreased renal perfusion and sympathetic stimulation of beta-1 receptors. And as we know from the previous lectures, renin ultimately leads to the production of angiotensin II in the plasma, and the release of aldosterone from the adrenal gland. Angiotensin II is a powerful vasoconstrictor, that increases systemic blood pressure, while aldosterone acts on the kidney tubules, to increase salt and water retention, and that will increase systemic blood pressure and cause edema. 
heart failure also increases venous return, which increases capillary filtration, causing edema. Faced with a chronic increase in workload, the myocardium responds by increasing its muscle mass, known as ventricular hypertrophy. Although increased muscle mass can increase cardiac output in the short term, contractility eventually suffers, as the metabolic demands of the hypertrophied myocardium continue to increase, and the efficiency of contraction decreases. So the drugs that can be used in the management of heart failure are, ACE inhibitors, angiotensin receptor blockers, aldosterone antagonists, beta blockers, diuretics, vaso and venodilators, and inotropic drugs. And that what we're going to discuss in the next lectures. That's all for this lecture. If this lecture was useful for you, leave like and a comment of your opinion, subscribe if it's your first time here and keep following us.